All right, this is a, a pretty out one, <laughs> probably the most out one I've done so far on this series. I really uh, appreciate that C sharp <laughs> as the starting note of the A minor chord. But um, I love George Garzon's playing. He's got a really interesting sound, definitely has an, an awesome way of really stretching your ear to hear some stuff outside of the typical tonalities that we're used to. And I know a big part of what he talks about is the triadic chromatic concept. And I haven't explored a lot of it, but I've dabbled in it a little bit. And I think the basic idea is that you basically just experiment using different triad pairs over different chords to get some new sounds that you haven't really heard of. Um, and I think, you know, I think he calls it random inversion. So you kind of randomly go through different inversions of different triads, basically just experimentation with different triads to come up with new sounds. Um, I think that's what it is. Like I said, I haven't explored it a ton. So if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. But I wanted to take one of his, you know, more outside sounding lines that definitely had some stuff that was outside of the typical tonality and see if I can figure out some different triads that he was using. And I was able to find a couple in this line, which I thought was pretty cool. So he's doing this over, I'll remember April over the bridge where we do the two, five, one to G major. And the first six notes, that's actually over the E seven chord to lead into the A minor. So the first six notes, we start with our pointer finger up on F sharp on the second string, hammer on to G sharp with your ring, pointer finger goes to B, back to the F sharp and hammer on to A sharp with your pinky and then back to B. So those are the first six notes, which is gonna be over E7. So you could just think of that as natural nine, third, five, natural nine again, sharp 11, and then five. So he's actually using a natural nine as opposed to a flat nine, but he's using the sharp 11. So technically you could think of that as Lydian flat seven. Uh, e Lydian flat seven, if that's what he's thinking, I'm not sure. And then from there, we switch positions, so we're actually going to hammer on from the B note to the C sharp with our pinky. And this, like I said, that C sharp is the start of the A minor chord. So right off the bat, we're starting on a major third. So, But I noticed, if you look at the next three notes, we have our first triad. We have C sharp minor. So C sharp, pointer finger goes to E, and then you hammer on to G sharp with your pinky. So he's using a C sharp minor arpeggio over an A minor chord. So starting on the major third and playing a minor arpeggio. So just combining those two arpeggios, taking A minor and C sharp minor. Interesting sound, combining the major third and the minor third. So, and then after that, middle finger goes to F sharp, and then middle finger goes to D. So, I'm not exactly sure if there's set rules with a lot of these triads that he does with this technique. I'm not sure if it has to be a three note triad or if you're allowed to just use two of the notes, but if you, he also counts two of the notes, I would say that you can call that F sharp to D, right? Just D major without the five. So we have C sharp minor and D major over an A minor chord. So minor arpeggio off of the major third and the major arpeggio off of the four, which is obviously more common, gives you that Dorian sound. And then from there, pointer finger goes to F, hammer onto G with your ring, and then pointer finger goes to E. So no triad there, right? It just kind of looks like the flat six, flat seven, and five of A minor. And then, oh, I'm sorry, actually, I, I picked up on one other arpeggio right here. When you, after the, the G and the E, so leaving out the F as a triad note, you have G to E, and then your pinky goes to B. So that's E minor, right? So now we have C sharp minor, D major, and E minor all over our A minor. So he's basically taking two normal sounding ones, right? D major and E minor, which are our, our 
arpeggios in Dorian and then combining the C sharp minor. So the C sharp minor is the one that's giving it that out sound. So a cool thing that you can take from that is maybe take a couple of triads that are in the key that you're used to using and then try to figure out another one that's a little bit outside of the key. So like in the case of the C sharp minor, the only note that really makes it crazy outside is the C sharp, right? The E is the fifth and the G sharp is the major seven, which is a little bit out, but it's not something that's totally outside of something we've heard before over a minor chord, right? People definitely use major sevens, but that C sharp really gives it that right crazy sound and then from there when, we're, when you hit this B note it's actually the start of the D7 chord this is really cool pinky on B and then pointer finger goes to C on the next string and then you hammer on to D with your middle finger and then pinky goes back up to G sharp on the second string so that's an interesting thing that almost kind of looks like uh, diminished scale right 13 flat 7 root and then flat five, or sharp 11 or flat 5. So now we got... And then from there, pick the E note with your pointer finger, and then ring finger goes to D. So that just looks straight, the 9 and the root, right? Very diatonic. And then flat 9 of the D chord, which is our fourth fret, E flat. And then hammer on to F. That's obviously... Right? We we're more used to seeing something like that over D7, we have flat 9, sharp 9. So now we have... Okay, and then here's the resolution to G. This part is pretty inside. So pointer finger lands on the D note. So we resolve to the 5th of G. Pick C with your ring finger. Yeah, just only pick C and then pull off to B with your middle and hammer back onto C. Then pointer finger back to D, middle finger on B, middle finger on F sharp, and then ring finger on D. So that's a B minor arpeggio, obviously more common over a G major chord to play B minor. And then pointer finger goes to E and pinky goes up to C. So once again, if we're counting two notes, at, that can be in the triad, right? That could be a C major, the third in the root. Pointer finger on A, and then ends with F sharp to E, which is the major seven to the six. Or pick the last two notes. So a lot of good stuff to learn from this line between those triad pairs and showing you kind of a cool way to mix some outside triads with some inside ones to really give you a new sound. So I'll do it a couple times slow.